Hi, hello, my name's Ollie and this is Book Draw. For those of you who don't know, I enjoy making images out of queer fiction and I also go off and do different things and recently I've not been around for the last couple of weeks because I have been away on holiday. Uh, but I'm back now and I've got heaps of footage which I'll share with you at some point but for well, right now I just wanted to tell you a bit about some of the fun things that I did while I was in Edinburgh Fringe. So for those of you who don't know, Edinburgh International Festival is an international showcase of various different art forms. It goes from dance, theatre, writing, music, comedy, cabaret, um, visual arts, <laughs> immersive theatre, live art, pervasive gaming, um, there's museum exhibitions, there's street performance, circus, it covers everything. Uh, and this extends even further through the fringe, which is where <laughs> basically everybody else has decided to get involved. And there's over 3,000 different performers which happen across the period of a month. And so I was there for uh, four days and I saw 26 shows during that period. So now I'm kind of tired, but I've had a really amazing time while I was there. And I wanted to share some of the great LGBT related performances which are happening because you will probably, wherever you are in the world, have the opportunity to see at least one of these shows. Some of them come from Ireland, some of them come from Australia, some of them come from America and South America. Some of them based are here in the UK and they tour internationally themselves. This concentrated period is a, a brilliant showcase of all this talent and then basically promoters um, will, and producers will select the products that they like and then they will bring them and tour them to wherever they're based. Now I just want to say that this is not an exhaustive list of all the LGBT related content that you can see during Edinburgh Fringe, it is just some of the stuff which I have either seen or been told about. Remember, there's over 3,000 performances happening during this thing, so it's highly unlikely that I'd be able to cover all the queer content, but this is just some of the cool things which I've seen and I want to share with you. The first one is Looking for John, which is by uh, Cahoots Theatre and uh, the Birmingham Repertoire theatre. So this is a story, a one man show um, who um, is kind of like the ultimate fanboy. He's been obsessed with this person called Tim Curry and not a lot of people know about him but he was an Olympic ice skating performer and at his peak he had 19 million people watching his performances on the telly and when he um, died this super fan found out that only four people turned up to his funeral. It's about his journey in discovering the reasons why that ha happened and also discovering more about his personal iconic hero. It shifts into more of a story which is about mortality and hero worship and how we idolise people and also want to um, leave a legacy. What I thought was really interesting and unusual which I didn't know about either is in Sheffield is that we have um, an Olympic sized uh, ice skating ring and there is a statue of him situated there and in the winter it just gets co um, covered up with some tinsel so this icon is just kind of hidden from history and it's again another example of how our LGBT icons do get erased from history. It's really exciting that this person has taken the time to create an entire play all about revisiting that hero and celebrating him. <laughs> one is Fag slash Stag, which uh, is with an Australian based company uh, called The Last Great Hunt. Um, this was a hilarious story, it's a two man show, um, they basically are both friends um, and have had a relationship with a female character who you never see, um, who's getting married and it's about the events that lead up to the actual wedding itself. Um, you see insights from either side of the two characters, the gay guy and the, the uh, male straight best friend. So they swap between their two narratives 
it's hilarious, it's so fast, it's so sharp. Um, it's also a bit of an emotional roller coaster with this one too. Um, there's lots of drama and tension. It's quite revealing to the inner psyche of a guy how much they are actually willing to tell their truth and what they will present to people. And you actually see a different side of the story through uh, the narratives of the two guys, which is really quite clever the way it's actually playing off with each other. Next one is Julio uh, Torres, who is based in New York uh, through the company Rabbit Rabbit. This was genius. It was so funny. It's called My Favourite Shapes. And it's such a bizarre little setup. He's just um, got a projection screen and um, his camera phone, which is doing a live feed, and he's presenting to you some of his favourite shapes. Uh, it seems bizarre, and it is, but he just basically creates these uh, incredibly witty, funny narratives which are um, absurd and uh, ridiculous, um, but somehow kind of really uh, charming and uh, draw you into his little world. It's like you're hanging out with a really cool friend who's just using his imagination to um, blow up any in inanimate object and make it some seem exciting and fun. Uh, if you go and see one comedy, I highly recommend this one for sure. This one's Gypsy Queen by uh, Rob Ward, and this is full on. It's so good. Uh, it's really, really fast. It's getting a two-man sort of show. The transitions are so sharp, so quick, um, and so fluid. Um, they'll be doing a, like a, a Scouse-based accent and then flowing into an Irish-based accent uh, to sort of Cockney-based accent. The transitions are just really on point. The both of the uh, actors in it are hilarious and um, really dynamic in their performances. Uh, they're also very easy on the eye. The story writing is really fresh. It's uh, looking at um, one character who is um, outwardly open about his sexuality, um, who's uh, a boxer, and then there's uh, another character who is in the closet, and it's uh, the tension of them kind of forming some sort of friendship uh, between themselves and the tension of the environment that they're working in. It's a dance piece between two guys that they're um, South American based uh, artists and this was one of my favourite pieces. It's kind of a slower burn but give it uh, the chance it deserves. They're two guys based in a locker room and they're basically pulling each other apart and competing against each other and you can't tell if it's um, kind of they're challenging each other, challenge each other's authority, or if they're challenging each other's position, that there's this that very kind of sexualized masculine tension between the two of them. Um, it <laughs> completely flips on its head what it means to be masculine, and it looks at all those kind of traditional movements, and it subverts them, and it extends them. Um, it's really playful and humorous, but what's also amazing is they actually involve um, a radio feed, which they're changing the channel, and they respond to the live feed of the radio. I also think it's probably at this point worth me saying uh, that if you like my content, you should click subscribe, or at least give me a like. Uh, it really helps build this channel and keeps me creating content like this.
The next one was incredible. It's called Five Guys Chilling. Now, I would say, do not do what I did, which was, I went uh, towards the end of my f uh, few days there, it's a later evening performance, I went alone. Do not do these things, watch it at the beginning, have a friend to cry on afterwards, and um, be near people where you can hug, and have something fun and uplifting afterwards. I came out of the performance feeling a bit rough and a bit dirty and a bit uh, like uh, desensitised by the world and hating everything that was ever queer. It's pretty messed up, it's pretty dark, because uh, uh, someone recommended it to me and I was like, oh that sounds cool, a comedy, a dark comedy, I'll be up for that, and saw the, the um, picture for it, I was like, this this looks like, you know, uh, Friends, kind of 90s sitcom, I better be witty and a bit bitchy. It is none of those things. It is humorous, it is funny, but it is dark. dark. It is really dark. It's all about chem sex and it's also all about the culture and uh, surrounding um, young gay men who, um, and older gay men who engage in practices of chemsex. Uh, it, I think it's one of these type of performances which should really be a part of sexual education because it's something that re is relatable universally. It's just that there is a high concentration of this type of activity through young gay men. But it, uh, it really talks about current issues, it talks about racism online, it talks about the effects of um, using chemicals uh, recreationally whilst having sex. It talks about the impact of using online apps to engage in um, short meetings. It talks about the differences in uh, types of uh, relationships that, and constructs within this subculture. It's really full on. That being said, I completely understand why other people did leave and at times I did feel like I wanted to leave because it was uncomfortable and there is a lot going on. Whoa, where is this going? I'm glad that I stayed to the end. I just wish that I had a nice fluffy comedy afterwards to like kind of recover from it. <laughs> talk about is Out, which is by Rachel Young and Dwayne Anthony. This is a piece which is exploring the concepts of what it is to be queer, the concepts of what it means to be uh, Jamaican or black enough in culture, and it's looking and exploring those uh, themes in a very abstract and frankly queer kind of way. It's brilliant, but it is something that is incredibly repetitive and probably belongs more in the bracket of live art. Live art can be something which isn't for everyone because it can be durational and it, it isn't usually linear. Um, and in this case, it is very repetitive, but it is also uh, very impactful in the way that it actually works. If you are looking to explore your horizons and seek something which is more experimental, then give this one a go. And as long as you can relax into the piece, you'll enjoy it and find that you can explore a narrative in a different and unusual way. Okay, so the next one is Scorch, which is by Prime Cut Productions. This one explores the character of Kez, uh, and it's in The Round. Um, this piece is exploring uh, Kez, who it identifies as male, uh, and is in the process of transitioning, uh, exploring his own identity through online chat rooms, um, and then forms an attachment to another woman. Through that process, it's um, about how he forms his relationship and then is perceived as lying to um, this other woman. The case which is then formed around uh, the portrayal of that lie. Uh, the themes are related to actual current uh, events which have been happening um, around uh, the UK. Um, so there's the Justine McNulty, um case which I'll add a link down below. Um, and you can see definitely that there are some influences which have been drawn from this particular case. 
Scorch is a morally complex story which is uh, dealing with a lot of various issues and manages to distill it into something which is easy to access and uh, easy to relate to. I thought that it was a really gripping, well written piece of uh, theatre which is just beautifully presented and portrayed through this characterisation. <laughs> The next one I want to refer to uh, on my list uh, is That's What She Said, which hosts a whole series of women stand-up female comedians, but there are a few from uh, lesbian and bisexual backgrounds, which I just want to highlight because they are awesome. So there's Rosie Garland, Cheryl Martin, Sophia Walker, and Maz Hedgehog. It's a really excellent uh, evening of different um, female voices with very different styles in comedy. It's worth checking out. and. Definitely something that um, you would re enjoy regardless of your gender or way in which you, that you identify. Next one I want to speak about is You've Changed by Kate O'Donnell. I haven't actually seen this piece yet and that's just because it will be presenting here in the Lowry in November so I'm going to be checking that out then. However I have seen Kate's previous work and she is hilarious and incredibly talented. I know that this particular piece will be exploring her transition through song which sounds exactly like the kind of um, production I am aware of Kate producing in the past. Next one is Adrino Capitelli, and it, um, this boy is in love. This story focuses on the, uh, the tales of one man who has finally discovered the love of his life. However, he is a little bit flighty and insecure, and it's about him trying to accept that he has found real love and the choices which are put forward for him, whether or not he will take off and run away, or if he'll actually embrace the idea of love. It's cute, it's sweet, and it's very endearing. Finally, there is Becoming Sherazade. This is uh, an interesting and unusual story. It's about um, his heritage with his parents and also how he becomes his own identity and how their previous experiences inform his current identity and how he has to separate himself from that to live his own life. It's a very big story which has got a lot of personal history behind it. It felt like watching it was something quite cathartic for the artist himself. <laughs> So that was my quick run through of some of the performances which I really enjoyed at Edinburgh Fringe. I highly recommend seeing all of them and there are tons more out there as well. I'll add links below so you can check them all out if you are going to Edinburgh Festival. If you've enjoyed this give me a like or click the subscribe and you'll see other content. I usually am talking more about queer fiction but today just because I've been away for a couple of weeks I wanted to share with you these great productions which will be coming around to you at some point in the future. Anyway, take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye!